Hello everyone and welcome to another Pirates of Voxel Play tutorial. Now, today we're going to go into how we set up a dedicated server for the game, but before I go into that, I want to make sure we all know what is going on in the game in the editor. So, if I press play and I start a local or RAM game, I get the options host new game or find local game. Now, if I press host new game, I will start a game that is both a server and a client and other people on my local computer or my local area network can connect to it. So let's do that. I'm just going to host a new game. It's going to initialize. I'm going to go and stay. I'm going to fly a bit so <laughs> the mobs don't kill me. And I'm going to switch over to my build. Now I'm going to run the build. And this is exactly the same project, as you can see. And I'm going to go into local LAN game, and I'm going to go find local game. And it's going to show up right here, in local servers. If I click on this button, I can join the game. Now I can find the other guy. Ah, here he is. And he can see me in the other screen. See, we're both in the same game. Now... In this game, if I go back to lobby, disconnect, and I go into online game, I can still connect to the server if I know where it is. So, usually the local host is 127.0.0.1. I can press connect, and again it's going to connect to the local game. Now let's move around and maybe find the other guy. This explains what happens with the host game. Host game has uh, client as well, so a player will appear. Now I'm just going to exit here, and I'm going to show you the other option, which is I'm just going to press play again, start the game. I'm going to go into online game, start in server mode. Now a lot of people are confused, because when you start in server mode, nothing appears. So let's do that. Okay, and you can see nothing. But the reality is that in scene view, a lot of things exist. Everything actually exists. All the entities, but they aren't rendered, which means we can use this as a dedicated server, which means the play a player doesn't exist, but we can connect to it. And I'm just going to go do just that. I'm going to start another instance. Now you can't see anything in the other, uh, in the editor game, but if I go into local or LAN game, and I press find local game, it will find my IP, my local IP, and I can connect to it from here. But if this was this will only find games on the local network or the local computer. But if I want to connect to a server through IP, I can go to online game and just like before, connect the server and press the IP. So if this was a public IP, I could connect to a public server if the game was hosted on a public computer. So now I'm inside the game, but no other player exists, right? So if I go into my Unity editor, I will find only one player. Okay, only one player. I can connect again by running the second instance. Let's do it like this this time. Find local game and it will find the game on the network or the local computer. Now this is all running on the dedicated server and that means that the server can handle everything but not render a bunch of stuff which makes it more lightweight for our use so if a, another computer is running it it doesn't need to be as fast as the computer the clients have and here I am again so two players two instances right one is here the other is here and the third one is here and now there are two players connected correct the reality is that we could just create a normal build and when we go onto the dedicated server, which is going to be a public machine, we can just start an online game, start in server mode, and that would be fine. People would be able to connect to it. But because even that uh, minimal rendering of nothing uh, takes up some resources, we can create another build, which will be different, and we can do this by checking server build in the build settings for Unity. 
So we can just go here and press server build. And if we press build here and I go into headless server, is my folder for the servers. That's what we call servers that use a terminal and don't have a, a render view. And I press build. I will create a server build for the game. And this is what we're going to deploy on the actual host machine that we're going to be setting up with AWS. And now that that's built, I'm just going to show you something. I'm just going to turn Unity off. I'm just going to close the application. I'm going to go here, and this is the headless build. And I'm just going to run that. And you can see that it's just a terminal window, like there's nothing, a command line window. And now I'm going to go into the normal build, and I'm just going to run it. And I'll go local game, find local game, and a game exists. So if I go here, online game, connect to server, and connect, a game exists for me to play in. So now that we have our headless server build, we can go in and set up AWS. How do we do this? Well, in Mirror, there's a useful guide for this. And you can see that if you go into server hosting, there's some, there some information on server hosting. And it says, during this guide, we will set up a dedicated server and place the server build of our project on a dedicated server. So the build we created by checking the checkbox server build is the dedicated server build we want. So they have some warnings. Important, before we begin, there are some potential problems you may face, as no server is truly free. So server providers are not free. Most of the time, you can start with free trials for a limited time. After X amount of time or X amount of used resources, the trial will end and you might incur payment. So beware of that. Always read the provider's free trial limitations, and some providers require a payment method for using a Windows instance. However, as long as you do not go over the limitations, the provider should not bill you. This is true for AWS. You will need a credit card and a phone number in order to uh, verify your information and get started. So, the whole explanation of what we did is here. During your development with Mirror, you will need to test your project as a client and as a server. They go over a few more stuff, but after that, you can go to AWS and there is a complete guide on how you can do this. Okay, so the five steps are account creation, which I'm not going to go over. You need to be able to create an account. You just click on the link, follow the steps. You will need a credit card and a phone in order to uh, verify your identity. That's as much as I can tell you for that. Now, setting up an instance with the EC2 management console. This is the console. This is the dashboard here, you can see. And uh, if you check here, there is a button that's called Services. This is the main button here. And there is another button called Region, and it's here. And this is where you set up your region. I have uh, selected London here. So you choose an Amazon machine and choose an instance type. Configure the instance, add storage, add tags, and configure security group. We just go here and we press Instances, Launch Instance. And now if we check free tier only here, we can find which are the free machines. And we're looking for a Microsoft Windows machine. And this is the one that we're looking for. Microsoft Windows Server 2019 base. And we select this. And the only available thing in free is a T2 Micro, which is uh, pretty underpowered. It's basically, it basically has one CPU and one gigabyte of RAM. I would suggest you go to a T2 a T2 medium or T2 large uh, for at least testing and stuff. And then if you can uh, optimize things further, maybe you can run it on T2 micro, but that's stretching it because uh, one gigabyte of RAM is barely enough. So uh, you can configure the instance details. You can select some options here. And as it says here, we add storage. So choose an Amazon machine, Microsoft Windows Server 2019 base. We did that. Choose instance type, 2T micro, we did that. Configure instance, nothing has to be changed. We click add storage, which I did. Add storage, nothing has to be changed, keep it default. So we check, uh, we need to add, we need to go to configure security group. This is the next step. Add tags, we don't need to do anything. Configure security groups, RDP, needed for this example. For clients, connecting through port 7777, for your mirror project and SSH if needed. Now we can go here and it has a screenshot of how it has to look and we can do the same thing here. So RDP, TCP it has a correct port and we just add a rule 
custom TCP rule, protocol TCP, port range 7777, and we want anywhere to that, and let's add the SSH. Review and launch. We check it all out. Okay, and we press launch. And once we press launch, it will tell us select an existing key pair or create a new key pair. Now, a key pair consists of a public key that AWS stores and a private key file that you store. Together, they allow you to connect to your instance securely. So, nobody else can do that. For Windows AMIs, the private key file is required to obtain the password used to log into your instance. For Linux AMIs, the private key file allows you to do securely SSH into your instance. Now, the selected key pair will be added to the set of keys authorized for this instance. Learn more about removing existing key pairs. Now, I can choose an existing one because I've created one, but you can create a new key pair. You can name it my instance key pair. Okay, and you just press download key pair. And you just press launch instance. Now, this is saved. Your instance is now launching. Get notified of estimated charges, create billing alerts, EDC. View instances. And once it's launched, you can select your instance and connect to it by clicking on the button. And uh, you can see there is a public IP address here, which you need to keep so we can connect to the game. And we just press connect. Now under connect, there are two options, session manager and RDP clients, remote desktop client. And we're going to just press on RDP. Now, before we press download remote desktop file, we're going to uh, unencrypt our password. In order to do that, we just press get password. And here it's going to ask for our key pair, the one we generated before. And we're going to go into browse. And I'm going to go into the file. And I'm going to pick it. And I'm going to go decrypt password. And this is the password. I'm just going to copy paste that and download remote desktop file. Now, once this is downloaded, I click on it and it starts a new connection. And if I press connect, it will ask for the password. I'm going to copy paste it in. I'm going to say remember. And I'm going to go into OK. I'm going to accept the certificate. OK, and now that we are connected, you can see that it's just a normal Windows-based machine. You can see that it's uh, there is a start menu. The connection isn't very good because uh, it's the lowest tier machine. And if I minimize this, I can go into my folder and take my headless server. I'm going to go into builds, headless server. I'm going to delete this folder that says, but don't ship with your game. And I'm going to create a zip file. And I'm just going to copy paste the zip file. And I can do this directly into the remote desktop. Paste. It's going to take a while to upload. And now that the build is uh, uploaded to the server, I'm just going to go here and I'm going to press Extract All. And it's going to tell me where. I'm just going to press Extract. Even that takes a moment on this server. Okay, and here is the console application. We're not going to run it yet. Before we do, let's uh, check our firewall settings. And we're going to go into, I'm just going to type Firewall. Sorry, Firewall, not Firewall. And I'm going to go under Advanced Settings. Let's minimize this. Okay, so Advanced Settings. It's going to open up a window. And it's going to tell me that there are inbound and outbound rules. And I'm going to create a new inbound rule. I'm going to right-click, New Rule. And I'm going to, it's going to be a port rule. So we're going to allow the port. TCP, I'm going to specify the port here. 777 allow the connection next okay next and i'm going to give it a name mirror so my mirror projects are going to go through this finish and i'm going to go th do the same thing for outbound and i'm going to just uh, right click new rule it's going to be a port rule next 7777 next Allow the connection next. Next. Let's give it a name. Finish. And now that's set up. I'm just going to minimize it here because we might need it. Okay, and I'm, this is the folder with the headless server extracted. 
and double click headless server and we're going to run it so it's going to take a moment because uh, the computer isn't the fastest i said okay there's some shade shader warnings don't be alarmed they're normal and let's see being serialized i think we're done I think we can connect now. So I'm going to just minimize it here and I'm going to go into my builds and this is uh, Pirates of Voxel Play, the normal build we used. Just going to double click. Let's take the IP address. I just copied it. Online game. Connect to server. I'm just going to paste it here. Click and paste. Connect. And we're connected. We're connected to a game that's on the server on an AWS Amazon server. Yeah. <laughs> it works. Well, if I can kill something. Oh no, I'm gonna die. <laughs> They're everywhere. <laughs> I need to I need to shoot them. I went to, down to 65. My health is down to 65. I almost died. Even the loot works. And I can pick it up. So now anyone that has the IP can connect to your game and you can test it out. And that's it for the uh, dedicated server tutorial. That's all you need to do in order to get the game running. It wasn't very difficult. I think uh, pretty much anyone that has experience with Unity and Windows can do it. Goodbye and stay tuned for our next tutorial.